If you're hurt, injured, don't waste time. Gary Johnson tries for every dime. Welcome to Simply the Law of Life, a program created by attorney Gary C. Johnson. Simply the Law of Life provides free legal advice and encourages happiness and quality of life. Now, here's Simply the Law of Life with Gary C. Johnson and Keith Casebolt. Hello, everyone, and welcome in to Simply the Law of Life. I'm Keith Casebolt, my dear friend and the creator of the program, Gary C. Johnson. Hey, guys and gals. What a wonderful life we have, right? Isn't it great? The uh, no fighting, no assuming anything, no criticizing, condemning, and complaining. Just good old living the good life and being happy, right? Hmm? The other day, well, it was actually yesterday, <clears throat> I had put some shows together feeling pretty proud of the shows that I'd put together, you know, for simply the law of life. Sitting in my office, minding my own business, by the way, <laughs> working on one of the cases that my client has. Knock on my door, and somebody comes in, one of my folks in the office, and hands me this and says, this is from Keith Casebolt. You see that little note there? says, two books for GCJ from Keith Casebolt. Now, what do you think about that? Hmm? So, I pick them up and start reading them because I couldn't figure out why Keith would deliver two books to me for no reason. I didn't ask for them. Or any, I mean, he just did. He just delivered two books. So, it told me something inside of Keith told him to send those books to me. Okay? Whatever that was. <laughs> and then I drop everything I'm doing and start reading them. And it dawns on me right then that there's something in the beginning of these books, both of them, that one of you needs to hear. Therefore, that's what I'm going to talk about. Because whichever one of you that needs to hear it, perk those ears up. Okay? because we're going to go into these books a little bit, because Keith would have never sent books like that to me unless something inside of him told him to. You're absolutely, you? no, you're absolutely right. And the thing of it, since we've been talking about this inner voice and how to control ourselves, and especially after last week when I told you all of my negative thoughts, I've been on a mission to find any kind of information I can get about trying to work with the inner voice and to be happy. So when I saw these books and I started reading them, I said, I got to get Gary copies because somebody is going to need the same help. So, my friends, we're first going to start listening to the inner voice by Douglas Block. I'm just going to read you a little bit of it because it sets the stage for some of the things I'm going to read you in this book. And this is for the person that needs this, that in the universe of it all, knew that you needed it <laughs> and made Keith bring me these books yesterday because it's not the program I was planning on doing, okay? <laughs> it just wasn't. This one starts off this way. I'm going to read it to you. As a spiritual being, you are connected to the intelligence that governs the universe. By becoming still and listening to your inner voice, you can communicate with that indwelling presence and let it guide and direct your life. This guy said, I just lost a home, job, primary relationship. In order to respond to the despair I was facing, the words that came through to me spoke of hope, comfort, and support. By the time I started, I started listening to the inner voice, I had emerged from the darkness and a new challenge presented itself. I asked, now that I am no longer preoccupied with the pain, what is my next step? I like to think of this evolution of being analogous to the process of recovering from alcoholism. The first step is to stop drinking. Then when sobriety is achieved, the real work of recovery can begin. 
We are all in recovery, recovering from a sense of a separation from our source, which is our inner self. When that separation is healed, we will no longer have to listen to our inner voice. We will be it. For now, may the words that follow help you to re rediscover your connection to that inner light. I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, you just, you had a phrase in there, one sentence that hit me so hard that when we get to that point, we won't be listening to the inner voice. We will actually be the inner voice. That was pretty profound. What he's saying here is that that inner voice, which we've been talking about to a certain extent is chatter, that thing that can drive you into despair, that can beat you down to nothing, that can cause you fear. He says there's a greater voice within you that really and truly, in his opinion, and in both of these books, and the more I, and I did a little more research even after I got into these books after Keith's dwelled, inside of each of you is something that is so unique and so powerful that it is amazing. How do we tap it? Mm. That inner voice, that true inner voice, the one that is your intuition, your hunches, your sense of knowing when something's right or wrong, all of those things, how do you tap it and make and, and use it? I'm going to read you a little more about this, and this is just from the introduction to this book. He talks how to develop inner listening. Over a century ago, Ralph Waldo Emerson stated, there is guidance for each of us by the lowly listening we shall hear the right words. Lowly, he means inside. The key to tapping the inner voice lies in becoming quiet, stilling the mind, and allowing intuition to bubble up into your awareness. I just think this is something I wanted to read to you folks. I think it's important. Okay? Now, you can achieve this stillness through any process that relaxes you and slows down your thoughts. Meditation, visualization, long walks, exercise, driving on a country road, just looking out. In the midst of this silence, your intuition will speak to you in any number of ways. Through words, a bodily sensation, a gut feeling, a picture, or just a general sense about things. Be open to the way that is right for you. Trust your own response. In time and with practice, it will become clear and easier to recognize. Like all great spiritual truths, the idea of listening to yourself is simple in theory, but really difficult in practice. This is because the higher voice is not the only voice seeking your attention. We have inside of us a false voice, also known as the voice of the ego. While the inner voice gives expression to who we really are, the false voice focuses on who we think we should be, the inner voice supports our essential nature, the false voice denies it. Now, this is the chatterbox voice that he's talking about, which is the false voice, the one that puts you down, that beats you down to nothing, that makes you feel you're not worthy. And he's saying that there's two voices there. You've got the inner voice, which is going to give you joy and harmony and peace, and the false voice, which is going to take you down to nothing. Gary, let me ask you a question on this. So here we've been working on this getting along with the inner voice, and I was trying to do the math there. I have the audible voice that I'm speaking in now, then I have the inner voice, and then I have the ego voice. So are you telling me there's more than two? There's three of us? I thought there's two, but I think there's really three. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't the human body amazing? Isn't the brain amazing? Can you imagine how unique you are to have all of that? To have it in your, and be it? and be able to use it, and to be able to be in harmony. It is extraordinary what a wonderful being each and every one of you are. I just want you to understand that and appreciate it and be it. That's all. Now I'm going to read you some more, okay? The primary experiences that emerges from listening to your inner voice is the presence of inner peace. This is the peace of God, which passes all understanding, an inner tra tranquility that emerges from a deep in the soul 
And from this refuge, you can literally rise above any turmoil or chaos that surrounds you in the outer world. That inner peace. That's what they call the peace of God. And there's some theories out there, my friends, that God is inside of us. Each and every one of you has God within you. And that that inner voice is your interaction with God. And it's the thing that we ignore. It's the thing that we don't listen to. It's the intuition that keeps us, would keep us out of trouble if we'd listen to it. It's the thing that matters, that inner voice. We know better, but we do it anyhow. <laughs> you know, that thing. We ask people for advice when we truly know the answer to our, our problems. In our yeah. own heart, we know what we should do, but yet we'll ask someone else, what should I do in order to fix this? In other words, right, we want to follow the false voice. Mm -hmm. And really, he calls it a false voice, but it's probably in one sense a false god almost inside of you. To uh, the ego. The, the ego. Yeah. I'm going to read you some more because to me this is interesting stuff. You guys may think Gary's going crazy, but I think this is fascinating stuff. Uh, if we could just figure out how to do it. Well, I, you know, Gary, before you read, I had someone say, you guys are never going to figure this out. And I, I said, that's okay. What we're trying to do is just learn a little bit about it. We didn't say we were going to figure it out. But you have to understand, folks, we are great spiritual leaders. We aren't preachers. We aren't psychologists. Keith and I are just two human beings that are very good friends that are struggling just like you are to try to find some answers to this life so that we can share with you what little we learn to maybe have a little peace and harmony. That's all. It's all a struggle that we all have, right, we're, Keith? We're all in this world together, and Gary, we all got the same problems. We all got the same fears. Mm -hmm. the, the, we're all afraid of the same thing. You're right. Okay, I'm going to read a little more to you because I think you need to hear this. That one of you that needs to hear it, listen up, okay? The second sign that accompanies the, accompanies the inner voice is that of joy. Following the inner voice also brings abundant energy and vitality. Finally, you will be supported by invisible hands. There is no doubt about this. When you follow your heart's desire, life will support you. When you do your share, God will do His. When you reach out for what you want, the universe will reach back and meet you halfway. Take a moment to review your life or the lives of your friends. You will find examples of how the universe assists us when we are being faithful to the calling of the inner voice. Did you hear that? Huh? You know, I really love that because you just said something so important. You know, and I've even had people ask me, what if a lot of people tune out and they're not listening to this? I said, Gary tells me time and time again, what if one person does? No, this is just for that one person that I know needed it because you brought me those books. Okay? Yeah. So if <laughs> one person listens to this and says, it's going to work for me, I can be happier. I can get out of the job or the situation that I'm not happy in, and I can move into something that I really want to do and be happy and have a happy life. What's now that? He word? talks about the signs of the false voice, which is that chatterbox we've been talking about, okay? Hmm? Just as the universe provides us clues when we follow the inner voice, it also lets us know when we follow the false voice. Following the false voice brings anxiety instead of peace, a burden instead of joy, judgment instead of love, confusion instead of clarity, and blocks the flow of life. Right? Mm -hmm. One of the key ways to recognize the voice of the ego is through the presence of fear. Going against family tradition, David dropped out of law school to pursue his passion for music. Initially, he felt the surge of joy and excitement as his authentic self came to the surface. Then suddenly, a series of doubts flooded his awareness. What if I fail? How will I get the money? What will people say? This was the voice of fear speaking. Fear of failure, fear of poverty, and fear of criticism. 
That's the chatterbox, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that takes us down every single time when we really want to get out there and do something. Moreover, while the inner voice is committed to the truth, the false voice, voice preaches dishonesty because you're mighty fine, you're good, you can do things. If you fail, it's okay, no big deal. You move on to something else, you, you try again. Those are the truths. But that false voice is dishonest. That chatterbox that tells you all these negative things, it makes you feel bad and it makes you feel miserable. And I agree with his statement here. It's the false voice. You know, what bothers me about this segment of the show, I, I wonder about all the people that are watching right now, Gary, that are just sitting there saying, I could have done this or I could have been doing this profession, or I could have gone to college, I could have done this or that, but that voice <laughs> came and said, no, I can't, or this false voice kept putting me down saying, it's not for you, it's for somebody else, and, and they didn't try to live their dream. So my friends, <clears throat> the one of you that needed this, you're gonna get rid of the false voice, and you're gonna get in harmony with that true inner voice, which will link you to the universe and to God. And once you do that, harmony, peace, and the happiness, which we're all striving for this year, will flow like a river. Hmm? We're gonna do it, that one of you. I ain't worried about the rest of you that's not. <laughs> listen if you want to, but you may get some good out of it. But I'm going after that one because when Keith brought these darn books to me, I knew what I had to do in this program. And Keith, knew what he had to do when he brought those books to me, knowing how busy I already was, okay? The key to supporting the inner voice is the next thing. At each moment in time, we are asked to make a choice, a choice between following the inner voice of truth or the false voice of separation. Here are some qualities that will help you remain faithful to the high, highest, the highest that is within you. Courage. The ability to feel your fears and move forward in spite of them, okay? Well, that's good, isn't it? I mean, basically you're saying it's okay to be afraid, acknowledge it, and, and say, I'm on. scared, but I'm going to do it anyway. Patience. The capacity to wait for your good and give yourself praise and acknowledgement, even when it is not coming from the world, even if the world's putting you down. You build yourself up. Say to yourself every day, when you look in that mirror, you say, I'm tough, I'm good, I'm awesome. I got God with inside of me and I'm gonna get in tune with him and we're gonna stay in tune all day and I don't care what you guys do. It's okay, you have your own choices to make. I made mine, my choice is to understand that I'm a creation and my creator is within me and I can stay in tune with him, ooh wee. And start the day that way. Just understand your own worth. I, you know, I love what you're saying on the positive attitude of, of saying, we've done tougher things than this. We've been through hard scrapes before. We've always come out on the other end. We're going to do it again. I'm not downplaying any of the bad things that may have happened to some of you. And I'm sure there are. The thing I'm trying to say to you is you can rise above it and you can still have some peace and harmony in this life if you can learn to get in tune with the true inner voice, not the false one. The false one that he's talking about here is that chatterbox that we've discussed, the one that's the negativity. The inner voice will lead you where you need to be. It'll, you'll have hunches, you'll have intuition, You'll notice coincidences. It's telling you where to go and what to do. And if you learn to be in tune with that, it is amazing what you can accomplish in life and what you can do. And it's never too late. Look at how old I am, and I'm just now learning a bunch of this <laughs> stuff. So, okay, it's, if I can try to get out here and learn this stuff, you can too, okay? 
What I like about what you're saying with this is when you practice it, then all of a sudden you're going to gain more friends. People are going to be nicer to you. All of a sudden doors open. And you might say, oh, he was just lucky or she was just lucky. You're saying it's not luck. It is a different way of living. It's a way of understanding what's inside of you. And there is immense, immense, immense intelligence inside of you. Every one of you. Immense. Learn to tap it. And learn to listen to it. And it will change everything in your life. Okay. Here's the next one. On dealing with the uh, supporting the divorce. Commitment. That's the willing to do whatever it takes to pursue your vision including the making of necessary sacrifices. You may have to give up some things, but once you've made your commitment that the inner voice has told you is what you need to do for you, make the commitment to make it happen. Didn't you tell me one time that it may require you to give up some negative uh, friends that are around you that you may have to say, I'm sorry, your, your negativity is not helping me. I'm just going to have to give you up. Okay, and the last and most important one, have faith. The willingness to trust in an invisible means of support. At times you may be called to leave a known situation, a job, home relationship, for the unknown. Your guidance may go against logic and reason. Logically, no, no, I shouldn't be doing this. This is when you need to put your faith and trust the process of following your inner voice. Faith. When you have the 12 steps in recovery, one of the first things that they, the addict, the people that are addicts are taught, you can't control this by yourself. You have to turn it over to a higher power. And that higher power that you're turning it over to will get you through it. And looking back at those 12 steps on that, I'm convinced now that that higher power they are talking about is that inner voice with, within each of us that has the power to guide us in the direction we need to go if we will turn it over to it and let it do it. You know what I find amazing about this, because you use the word recovery. Uh, we talk about addicts w with drug problems. We talk about alcohol problems. We talk about substance abuse. No one talks about what you're talking about here on this program, the negativity of the inner voice and what it does to your life. True. But we're talking about it to that one person that needed me to talk about it, right? I'll read you just a little bit more, then I'm going to quit reading, okay? But here's the paradox. Those things we think of as secure exist in the world of form and are therefore subject to change. On the other hand, the one thing we think of as insubstantial, the world of our spiritual world, is really the only secure place we have to stand. It is your connection to your spiritual nature, to your higher power to the God inside of you that constitutes your real security and your ultimate grounding. To summarize and listen to your inner voice, you first ask for inner guidance. Then get quiet and listen. <laughs> Finally, when you listen, act upon what you hear. Step out in faith and give life the opportunity to support you. If you keep your focus on that benevolent higher power, not only will you be guided, but also your life will unfold more beautifully than you could have ever imagined. And I believe that. The universe will open up for you doors that you would never even know existed. Gary, is it safe to say that most successful people, if we ask them about their success, they knew about this principle that you're teaching on this program. They knew about becoming friends with the inner voice 
and stepping out and doing the things you just talked about. There was an example of a person that had talked to Oprah Winfrey and how did she succeed and do what she did and she said, I just listened. And I liked what you started at the beginning of this program about. You said there's different ways to do that. Some people meditate. Others will get in the vehicle and take a long drive. Others will take a walk. Others will just sit out on the porch and look into the sky, the sunshine. But there's different ways for you to be quiet and listen to this voice. Now you have to understand, my friends, this may not be easy. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not easy for any of us. But the rewards are so substantial that it is worth trying. Try to put down the false voice, the negativity, the you're not worthy voice, all of those things that make you feel so bad. And try to tune in and get going that inner voice that connects you to universe, the universe and God. We're going to run out of time here in a minute because, and I'm not going to get to this book so what I will do next week, my friends, is give you some examples from this book, <clears throat> which is a spinoff. It's not really a spinoff, but it makes you know, a little more sense out of what this guy says about the inner voice. So I'm going to share that with you next week because it is important that I share what's in these books because I am convinced that that inner voice, that universe we're all in tune with, is what forced Keith to drop those books off to me yesterday and what forced me to drop everything I was doing <laughs> and start reading them because we knew we were going to do the, a show, okay? Yeah. And you know what I love about it? We're in, our, we're in our new studio, the new name, Simply the Law of Life. And what that means, Gary, that you came up with is you will get out of life what you put into it. If you're constantly putting in negative thoughts, you're going to get negative results. If you put in positive thoughts, you're going to get positive results. Well, my one friend that needed to hear this today is going to awaken that inner voice, and you're going to stop listening to the false voice. Right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, no, no, no. Turn that volume down. Let's get a little peace and quiet here, and let's see what the inner voice tells me I ought to be doing. Absolutely. Okay. And we'd like to hear your thoughts. You can do that, Gary, at GaryCJohnson.com. My friend, good program. Thank you so much. On behalf of Gary C. Johnson, I'm Keith Casebolt. Thank you so much for tuning in to Simply the Law of Life. As always, Gary and I look forward to seeing you again next week at this same time. Thank you for watching Simply the Law of Life, a program created by attorney Gary C. Johnson. Until next week, may you be safe, blessed, and happy. Who really knows which lawyer you should choose? Other lawyers know. They've invited Gary C. Johnson to teach his method of judo law in Denver, Atlanta, New Orleans, and across the nation. Gary used judo law to set the record for the largest personal injury verdict in the history of Kentucky. Now, which lawyer should you choose? The choice is clear. Gary C. Johnson. This is an advertisement.